grace, mercy, and peace to you. From our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever done a puzzle and gotten to the end and you are missing a piece or two? Oh, is that frustrating? You need every piece for the whole picture to come together. Or have you ever needed to put together something that you bought from Ikea? And you take it out on the floor and you look at the 176,000 pieces in front of you. And you start to assemble and then you get to the end and you just can't find one darn bolt that you need to put it all together and make it hold tight. A few key pieces missing makes all the difference in the world. But what if you then find that piece or find that bolt that has been missing? What joy that is. <laughs> because finally the whole picture can come together or that piece of furniture can actually work and stand up the way it's supposed to. Friends, this morning I'm here to simply say, I believe that some of us here, maybe this morning some of us online, are the missing piece in God's puzzle. Some of us are the missing bolts that are needed to complete God's projects in the world. And in our Ignite vision, over the next two years, and the truth is, the picture of what God wants to do cannot be complete without each piece being a part of the puzzle. And sometimes, a single verse within Scripture can really have so much to say to us. And today, the first verse in our Scripture, the first half of verse 6, really lays out the three key things that God wants us to hear today. So while we'll touch on the rest of it, this first simple verse will really bring God's truths home to us today. And here is this verse. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Seems simple, but there's a whole lot packed into those words. First thing is simply this. In His grace, God has given different gifts. Do you believe God has gifted you uniquely? Do you believe God has given you different gifts than the person next to you? He has. Turn to the person next to you or someone near you and say, I've got gifts. Now say it like you mean it. <laughs> I've got gifts. You've got gifts. You see, I think sometimes we can have this tendency to overlook our own gifts when we see what others have. Sometimes we can minimize the gifts that we have as we fall into envying people who have the gifts that we don't have. But friends, the first truth God wants to simply remind us of today is that God has gifted me, and God has gifted you. So in your booklets, this is the first thing. It's like, duh, Kendall, I know this. But I want to make sure we're driving it home clearly. God has gifted me. Put it down. Take it to heart. And as Paul begins to name this for the, the Christians in Rome, he begins to lay out what some of those gifts are. He goes, some of you have the gift of prophecy, others of serving, others of teaching, others of encouraging, others of giving and leadership and showing kindness. But that's just a short list. Because as you expand and look throughout the New Testament, there's a much bigger and wider list of over 20 gifts that God has given. And friends, these gifts are gifts that God gives for building up his body in the world. So let me ask you, how many of you have ever done a spiritual gifts inventory? How many of you have done one of those? Okay, quite a number of you have, but probably almost half of the people here, and I don't know how many online, have not done one of those. 
Well, I encourage you to do that because sometimes we know parts of our gifts, but we don't know all of it. Whenever I've done a spiritual gifts inventory, my top three gifts are usually hospitality, leadership, and teaching. But there are so many other gifts that God has given that I don't have, but that you have. If you haven't ever done a spiritual gifts inventory, go to our app, and uh, under the serve button, there's a very simple spiritual gifts inventory that you can do so that you could name your three top spiritual gifts. We do this in every new members class here, but it's just a great practice to do. Because you see, friends, God has work to do in this world, work to do through this church, and it takes all the gifts of all God's people for that to happen. God is calling light of Christ to things. God is calling us to things in the next two years that aren't possible if we don't recognize our gifts and aren't exercising them. One of the core values at Light of Christ that we, is, we got clear on over 20 years ago was simply this, that we at Light of Christ value connecting people in meaningful service based on their gifts, skills, and passions. The goal is not to have someone with the gift of um, mercy maybe doing finances. That may not be a good fit. But God wants to help you, according to your gifts, find a place for you to fit within God's work in the world. And friends, I believe, and I seriously do believe this, that God has a plan for you to use your gifts for his purposes in the world. I think sometimes we think that's true for others, but do you see that for yourself? But God doesn't just use our gifts, God also uses our skills. Sometimes skills that we have been trained in and that we've learned through the years. There's a group of men and women in this congregation who have gifts in finance and accounting, and they use those skills that they have developed over time to forward their careers and provide for their families. They also share those skills in overseeing some of the finances here at Light of Christ to make sure that we're staying on track and stewarding the resources well that God raises up. Sometimes God works through our gifts. Sometimes God works through skills that we've developed. What also is striking is sometimes God uses us in surprising ways according to our passions. This always struck me that some of you may have met through the years the man who was the architect who designed our new campus, Dave Skiffington. Since we started working with him back in 2006 and we worked with him 15 years, a lot of us got to know Dave through those years. Dave isn't a member of this church, but he's active in another church about 15 miles from here. And you'd think someone who's like an architect, well, he probably serves on his church's property team, or maybe he's on a long-range planning team at his church. He isn't that I know of. But I do know one place he serves. He's a small group leader in children's ministry. I love it. Dave has this tender heart, and he loves Jesus, and while he's designing buildings during the week, on the weekend, he's working with second and third graders. I just love picturing this guy who's like 6'3", down on the floor, and hanging out with kids and helping them to figure out who Jesus is for them. In his grace, God has given us different gifts. Do you know yours? Here's the second thing God wants us to hear. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. Sometimes we don't find our role within God's work because we don't really know our gifts. But sometimes I think it's though we know what our gifts are, we just kind of hold them close to the chest. We're afraid to sort of invest them because we don't know how it's going to go, so we stay disconnected. We watch ministry happen rather than be a part. But friends, here is the second truth that God needs us to hear. And in many ways, this is the crucial one. My gifting is for others' blessing. So often I think 
we see the gifts that, when we do recognize the gifts that God has given us, the abilities, the interests that God has given us, we think they're about our lives, and partially they are. But what scripture again and again calls us to is that my gifting is for others' blessing. Christianity is simply not a spectator sport. It's a participatory sport. We're not people who sit in the bleachers and watch other people do ministry. God has called us, all of us, to use our gifts for special purposes. You know, I think sometimes the way we set up our worship environment helps to mess up our thinking. I mean, here we are gathered, those of you out in chairs here, those of you watching online, and you watch Josh or Faith or myself up here leading in worship, and sometimes we can begin to feel like what we're doing is we're watching worship rather than participating in worship. But the whole reason that any of us are up here on the platform is not for you to go look at us and go like, oh, look what they're doing. We're simply here to help lead you in the worship of God. But I think that sort of watching versus participating can flow over not just from worship, but to how we do ministry. That I think sometimes people around here go, boy, doesn't Jessica do a great job working with the kids here? Or isn't it amazing that Pastor Mo and Kim and Jared we're with all of these junior high kids, and I didn't have to go. No, and I wasn't saying that personally. I would have loved to have been there. I just need to be with all of you guys today. But the truth is, the staff here at Light of Christ are not the people who are doing the ministry. Here again, this is a church we named this many years ago. The Light of Christ and the Church Council have called together a professional staff to lead ministry, to equip, train, and support the people of this congregation to accomplish its mission. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things. God has given who? Us. Different gifts for watching ministry? No. For encouraging ministry? No. For doing something. For doing the ministry that God has called all of us to. I know some churches try to bring this home that when they have a printed bulletin on the back of it, they'll put at the very top, ministers, and usually they expect to see, oh, pastor, someone, or pastor, that. They put ministers, all the people of God. Because we're all called to be Jesus ministers in this world in different ways. And if you don't know your gifts and haven't figured out how God is wanting you to use them, then you're missing out. You're missing out on your calling from God. You're missing out on the fulfillment that God wants to bring into your life. You're missing out on the connections that God wants to build into your life with other people. And you're missing out on the blessing that God can use you to bring to other people. We simply don't want you to miss out. Now, I know a lot of you do know your gifts, and, and a lot of you are using them in amazing ways. I just had a chance to see that a couple of weeks ago when I went on the E3 retreat. There was a team of like 40 adults that all with different roles, using their gifts in different ways, and served in this amazing way that blessed the whole crew that came along. And this weekend, not only are Pastor Mo, Jared, and Kim up in Lake Geneva working with our junior high youth, but a whole bunch of other high schoolers and adults in this congregation who God has gifted and given a passion for working with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. And they're pouring into them this weekend and bringing a blessing to them. For those who have found their gifts, and sharing their calling. They know the blessing that is. Last month, I asked our staff, I just sort of said, so where are some of the areas where you're seeing gaps? Where you're seeing like, man, if we had a few people who discovered their gifts of help, where could they serve others? And let me just share a couple with you. One they mentioned was that is 
like the most obvious that we see and yet we often don't think of. Our altar care team. Every week they lay things out. They come 20 minutes early. They get everything ready so that we can share in communion. They help to hand things out. And then at the end, they clean, clean up to make sure things are ready for the next service. A simple ministry and an absolutely critical one. People with the gifts of help and, and hospitality can serve in this ministry so well. And it's a team that really needs a couple more key folks to be a part of it. And we're launching a new eye care ministry or a new wave of it. We introduced it last year. As it's a ministry where we train people in this congregation who maybe have the gift of, of faith and, and mercy and hospitality and encouragement. And we basically train them, provide 25 hours of training for them to walk alongside someone who's going through a difficult season. Last fall, we trained a dozen people. And I can tell you, as of today, all of those people who are available are matched with another person being an ally, sort of connecting with them on a week-by-week -week basis to providing care for folks who are maybe going through a divorce, going through a health issue. But friends, the need is greater. So we're opening up another opportunity for training. And I love this. I saw one of the people who signed up to be an eye care ally in this next wave is a dad. A young dad, he's got two young kids. And you kind of go, he's got to be so busy. How could he possibly do this? Well, he's a young dad who knows that he has a gift of mercy. And just sensed, I bet this is a way that God can use me. Use my gifts to be a blessing to others. There's one final piece, one final word in this scripture that I think God wants us to hear. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. When I read through this passage uh, this past week again, I was struck by this. Paul kept using all of this passionate, encouraging language. He says, do it well, work hard, be eager, serve the Lord enthusiastically. For you English teachers, you probably noticed all the adverbs that were in this scripture. Because Paul was encouraging them to engage fully and passionately in the calling that God had for their lives. Well, friends, this morning and in the next weeks of this worship series, We've interviewed some folks in this congregation to just get a glimpse of how these truths have been lived out in someone's life. And so I want to show you a, a short video here of one couple in this congregation that when we video, we went like, oh, do they totally fit with igniting passion? Because they're passionate about serving. So take a look and hear some of the journey that God took Jack and Nora Belford on. Take a look. My name is Jack Belford. I'm Nora Belford. I have been with Light of Christ for almost 18, 19 years. Also been here about 18, 19 years. I work in production as uh, one of the directors of production. I've been involved in food pantry, um, welcome ministry, a little bit of production, and I'm sure there's more. <laughs> Quite a bit. I remember with we were at home, and I was telling you know, Nora just how things were just empty in my heart. There was something missing. There was a hole, and I couldn't figure out. I didn't know what it meant. I really didn't at all. And you know, I was talking to my sister, June. She's my twin sister, and my father at the time, too. And I was explaining to them, but they were saying, you know, there's a place for you. Just you'll find it. But my sister says, go out the front door, drive up the street, and you'll see what you're looking for. And guess what? I was going right up the street and Light of Christ sign was right there. So Nora and I attended a five o'clock service and we've been attending ever since. Jesus uh, came into my heart and I said yes to Jesus. Before that, I really wasn't a passionate person around Christ. Sure, I knew who Jesus was, but there was no faith. There was no uh, belief in Jesus as my savior. It was just, oh, I know who Jesus is. Like as if I looked up somebody in the dictionary. But when I came here to Light of Christ, a song was played at the front of the altar, and it was more precious than silver. And there's a backstory to that. 
because what it meant was, you know, money was my God for a while. So I fell to my knees and said, yes. That's my story. The church I was at previously, I just attended on Sunday. I didn't participate in anything beyond that. Angel Tree, I think, was the first thing that came up right after we started coming here, and I jumped all over that. And then from there, the door just opened and it kept going. So it was awesome. That's one thing that Light of Christ offers, and that's one of the exciting things about it, is that you see so many things that are going on here at Light of Christ. It's not like you just have come in on Sunday and go home on Sunday. There's so many opportunities just to serve there was an opportunity for me to serve in an area that I had some knowledge in, had some previous experience in. Uh, I played drums uh, at a, a studio in Wheaton, and we did music for Wheaton College. And we did it for Hallmark and various other clients that we had. And I was exposed at that time in the mid-80s. This was 1984, 1985 time frame. I was exposed to Christian music, but I was not following Christ. So God had, I think back then, prepared me for what I would, God would want to use my talents here today at Light of Christ. I had the most unique opportunity. Um, I had lost my job and I was totally floundering on what to do every day. Kind of like, do I go back to work? Do I retire? What do I do? And then all of a sudden we're moving and we have to go to a new church. And the people that were helping us move because of COVID suddenly weren't able to do that. I was, I guess, asked and, and thoroughly enjoyed stepping up to that challenge of moving this entire church with Cub Scouts and Cub Scout dads and all these vans pulling up and just putting stuff in the Welcome Center and then having to put it all away. And it was amazing. I never felt so fulfilled and so, I guess, needed and for this type of a purpose. It isn't like someone needed me to go paint a wall in their house. This is a purpose that had a lot of meaning. Giving to the Lord through Light of Christ Church is not a burden. It's a passion. Sometimes I think when people say, you know, you need to give your first fruits or your tithe and so on. Sure, if you want to think about it in a mathematical Excel type of way, sure, you could do that. Put an Excel sheet, figure out your 10% and whatever comes out, that's what you get delivered. Or you think about it with your heart and guess what? That number of 10% usually changes quite often, usually up the upside. And it's not that it hurts you, it helps you. And I think God gives back every part of what you think you've lost and then some. Because you didn't lose it. It just became an opportunity for other people to use that so that others can grow. We give money every week um, and then we donate to other things as well. And then I can see where that went. I can see what developed from that. And I can see a ministry grow, or I can see children grow, or just in all sorts of ways. And I just love transparency. And I just love to know that whatever my giving was, that it, it developed into something. What excites me is those that have yet to experience who Christ is, those that are unchurched, that we have an opportunity to reach out to them in various different ways, whether it be through you know an online way or through our front door here at the building way. But for us to get the message out to say, this is a home for you and Jesus Christ wants to welcome you into this church because I gotta tell you something, if I can give someone the same feeling I had when I came in here, boom, done. Talk about folks who God has ignited with passion. Friends, I forgot to name what the actual third point is that I wanted to lift up for us today, and it's not a point, it's simply a prayer. Ignite in me passion, Jesus. Ignite in me passion. Friends, I believe some of us are here today, and God had awakened passion in us for following him years ago, and some of that passion needs to be relit in this chapter. And that's fine. God can do that. Some of us maybe have never figured out what is it like to live passionately as serving Jesus with our gifts and our talents and our skills. Maybe God's going to do that in a new way as we head into this vision in these next two years. Wherever it is, that's part of what this journey is about. Igniting something in us as a community but God igniting in you and me uniquely and individually. I want to close with a 
simple story of something that happened to me this past week. I went to go see a couple in this congregation that I needed to connect with on something. As I sat down with them, they shared a little bit of what their journey has been. Two years ago when the pandemic hit, they both lost their jobs. Then they knew that, and I knew that. And I connected with a husband back a year and a half ago, and he just said, Pastor, I've just got to find somewhere to be able to do something with my time. I've got this time, and I'm going crazy. I need to do something. So we looked at a couple of different ways where he could serve, where he could volunteer, and he found a connection, tried a couple things, and then connected in with a food pantry. And over the last year and a half, he has been helping out, I think it probably evolved over the time, but now it's every Wednesday morning. In the past, he had been going and driving to the grocery stores, gathering the food that they were able to provide for the food pantry, brings it back, and, and he helps them to get it stocked and, and ready to be delivered to the individuals in need in our community. Well, what Dave told me is he goes, Pastor, he goes, I'm finally back to work, and I had known that. And he said, but this is what I didn't know. He said, I got back to work, and I told my boss, the only thing that has kept me sane in the last year and a half is this serving that I've been doing. He goes, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have a chance to do that. So even though I'm back to work full time, I still want to drive for the food pantry every Wednesday morning. Can you give me the flexibility in my life to be able to do that? And his boss said yes. <laughs> he saw the difference that it made. I emailed Dave after I left them, and I said, Dave, can I share that with the congregation? And here's the email he sent me back. He said, the rewards that serving the pantry have given me are countless. It truly was a lifesaver in a time that appeared very dark. The clients and patrons that think I am helping them, but the truth of the matter is they are helping me by giving me a purpose with an opportunity to do my part to make a difference in their lives in some small way. Pretty cool, he ended. I want to say not cool, Dave. That's hot. Way to live with passion, brother. Let's pray. Jesus, you have drawn us here this morning because you want to continue to ignite passion within us as a people and with us individually. Help us to understand and truly recognize the gifts you have given us and to recognize they're not just for us, but for bringing blessing to others. Ignite us, Lord, in the way that you want to use our gifts in this next chapter, in this next season. In your name we pray. Amen.